Good morning, King's Church, Cockermouth, and welcome to our meeting this morning. If you are visiting by looking into looking on YouTube, uh, please feel very welcome, and we're delighted that you're joining us this morning. Well, it's nearly Christmas Day. Just five more uh, days, or as the young ones would say, just five more sleeps until Christmas. And we hope that you're feeling in the Christmas spirit, getting a bit Christmassy. And what better way to start our meeting with a carol this morning. Paul, Alison and Alex are going to lead us in a carol and look out for the Christmas earrings. Thank you guys, That's, that was really great. Now it's uh, a bit of fun time. Zoe's going to uh, go out and ask a few people what Christmas means to them. Baubles or tinsel? Oh, baubles. Tinsel all the way. Baubles. Baubles. Christmas Day or New Year's Eve? Christmas Day. What is your favourite Christmas song? Um, Silent Night or oh, Holy Night. Holy Night. Silent Night. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is to write. Yay! Mariah Carey or Michael Bublé? Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. That's like asking to choose between children. Michael Bublé every time, slash Malcolm Dowler. Mariah Carey. Michael Bublé. Not Malcolm Dowler. Mince pies or Christmas pudding? Christmas mince pies. Pudding. Mince pies. Mince pies. Christmas pudding? Mince pies. Mince pies. Oh, mince pies for me. Mince pies. Depends who makes them. Mince pies, I think. Mince pies. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Your mother's, your mother's mince pies. <gasps> what does Christmas mean to you in two words? New life. Fun. And new beginnings. Christmas dinner. Fun. And... I like it because I like it when I spend my family time together because we get to open presents together. Fun and family. Fun and family. Family time. Family and happiness. Presents and um and the Christmas fun. I'm going to treat and have three. God with us. Jesus and family. Jesus and family. What is your favourite part of the nativity story? Swaddling clothes. The, no. <laughs> the Prosecco celebration at the end. They never put that bit in, but that's the best bit. <laughs> the bit where the children have finished performing it. I'm, I can relax. <laughs> when, when Jesus is born. When Jesus gets given his presents from the three kings. The angel tells people that are less than what people would think are less than the shepherds he told shepherds before anybody else I like that when they were desperate they were given shelter when 
when Jesus was born. When Jesus was born. Um, everyone in the story is pretty ordinary and I think that's quite a good message for a lot of us because sometimes you think you have to be quite extraordinary, like Mary was dead or normal. Um, and dead unusual in terms of, you know, she wasn't expecting to be the mother of God. And even the shepherds who were the first people who were told were quite ordinary people. And I think that's quite a nice message even today. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Well, thank you, Zoe. That was great fun. And it was great to see Santa checking up on a little bit of sound theology as well. That's always good news. And just for the record, I'd like to say that my mother-in-law does make the best mince pies. So, Barbara, if you're watching this, I love your mince pies. Now we've got some more friends that have got some great news to share with us. I think you're going to enjoy this. Bethlehem has never witnessed anything quite like this before. Unidentified flying angels, astronomical light in the heavens, foreign visitors asking for news of a king, crowded streets and inns filled to capacity, a baby born without a doctor or even a midwife in a stable outside the Holy Day Inn. And that's the good news for tonight. Peace on earth. Don't they have great voices? Thank you guys for doing that. Now it's interview time and I don't know how Joelle has done this, but she's got some very special people to interview. Good morning. So I'm really excited again this morning. We've got more amazing people to speak to. So this morning, it's great that we're going to have the angels with us. So welcome guys. Lovely to have you. So it's hard to know where to start when I'm asking you questions, but over the years, you must have seen some amazing things. Can you tell us about some of them? Oh yeah, we've seen some great things. I mean, even right at the beginning in creation, the fact that there was a creation mm -hmm. and Adam and Eve and walking in the garden with God. Yeah, it was amazing. But there were some sad moments too when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and had to leave the garden. That was quite tough. But we did know that God had a plan, a special plan to rescue mankind. Yeah, that's true. One of the standout moments for me was when he rescued the children of Israel by parting the Red Sea and took them across on dry land. But then the Egyptians chasing them couldn't cross on dry land, so they got away. Yeah, amazing deliverance, wasn't it? But I love the way that God works with individuals like Lot. And also as well as one of my favourite times was when you actually had to appear to Peter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Peter was totally confused, wasn't he? And um, that you come to rescue him from prison. It was good fun. Yeah, that was, uh, it was nice. I just sneaked up on him and went, boom. And he, he didn't really see me coming. But he got off lightly because Paul, we had to bring an earthquake. We had to bring the whole building down to get Paul out. Yeah, that's true. He was not expecting that. Yeah, also as well, we were very impressed when, uh, for us when God spoke to the young child, to Samuel, in the temple. That was pretty amazing too. That's fantastic. You have seen all sorts of things. So... The angels had quite big role in um, announcing the birth of Jesus and you told quite a few different people. I mean, was the birth of Jesus what you expected? 
No, it wasn't because we knew God's plans would be perfect, but we weren't prepared for the extraordinary lengths that God was prepared to go. We were quite shocked with his plan, weren't we? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, this is the son of God being born. This was, you know, coming down from heaven and everything that heaven offers, all that power and authority, all that ability. And then he's brought down and become a man, become a human, all the limitations at that house. Yeah. And also because if God's son was going to be born on earth, we thought he would have been born in a royal palace. But that wasn't the case. It was actually born in a stable, in a, in a manger. It was really what not we, we thought it would, was God's son was to be born in, didn't we? No, I mean, we thought there'd be no palace big enough. We said, well, we'll go and build a palace. It's got to be a giant one. It's got to be the best palace ever. Mm. And he was actually born in a stable with animals, with donkeys and cows and sheep. And any farmers out there know what smells they make and what they leave behind. But this is where God chose for his son to be born. It was exciting, though, when Gabriel appeared to Mary. Um, she was so modest. She really listened and felt blessed. And she wanted to, um, it to happen, just as the angel said. She was really obedient, wasn't she? But we, also, we also appeared to Joseph as well, because mm. he had to be told that he could trust Mary and that the baby was being born of the Holy Spirit. And he was obedient to God as well, and he did. Yeah. He took Mary as his wife. So it all happened as God planned. Um, Jesus was born in very humble circumstances and we were all there to witness it. Yeah, thousands of us all praised in the birth of the Saviour. That is amazing. So what was it like telling the shepherds? Well, we were excited to tell them, weren't we? We were really excited to tell them, but they were, they were so funny. shocked. They were so stunned, weren't they? Really shocked. And finally, there are verses in John 3 that say, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What was it like when Jesus rose from the dead and conquered sin? Yeah, we, we hadn't been sure of what God's plan was going to be, but when we we've discovered it, we realised it was so perfect. And we had great celebrations in the heavens because God's son was victorious once and for all in defeating sin and death. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was a time of great rejoicing. I mean, there were thousands of us out there, all, all, the, all the bells and whistles, all the harps and the music in heaven. Mm. And none of us could believe from the start, we couldn't see how God being born as a man was going to do anything. But, you know, we don't know. God knew that God had a plan and his plan was perfect. And now anybody who calls upon the name of Jesus can be saved. Yeah, amen. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It has been great to have you here with us and speaking to us. If you've got any questions about the interview today or you would like to know more about the Christian faith, please get in touch at pastoral at kingscc.org. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joelle. Thank you for uh, that interview. That was that was really great. Now, back by popular demand, we have Bear Ovenhob. Yes, he's back. He's had a break. He's had a few weeks off and now he's back and he's going to do a great Christmas adventure. So let's enjoy Bear Ovenhob. everyone i'm back with my dad he likes to call himself bear grills but we all call him bear oven hob morning everyone uh, we're here for our christmas expedition and we're going to be going to one of the most desolate corners of the globe in greenland a place called brigham and it's going to be a life and near-death expedition in the freezer okay so as you okay. can see it's one of the coldest places on the planet uh, where temperatures can plummet to a mind-numbing minus 90 degree fahrenheit you can survive if you know how, so pay attention, it might just save your life. Uh, our map is here, um, navigation is going to be absolutely key, especially in snow, in these yeah. kind of conditions. Okay, so let's find this desolate, desolate place. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, Katie, you can see that with this snow, snowbound country, it's just completely featureless. And... Um, you know, the only way we can navigate is by using the contours on the map. Otherwise, we'd just be toast. You know, we've just got to use what we can see. 
there's some little features here, some ring contours, and we're just gonna follow the contours, okay? Come on. Yeah, here we are, that's, this is the next, next place we wanna be going for. See, with the avalanche and uh, crevasses and all this kind of stuff, it can be really dangerous, so we've just gotta be really on, on with the navigation. We've gotta be absolutely spot on. Okay, on to Brigham, let's go. Okay, Daisy, I cross this glacier now, and the bigger the glacier, the way I'm going to keep traversing in now. If I fall, I'll go first. If I fall down a crevasse, sadly, this into the snow. I'll get your ice axe and wrap the rope around really quick. Okay, and then you can pull me out. And I'll do the same for you. Okay, let me have the map. We don't navigate, we've had it, okay? So to follow the glacier, we're just gonna use the map, just use the glacier, edge of the glacier as a handrail, okay? Okay, let's go. Okay, I think at that last point where we're navigating, I think we've just got a little bit lost. But anyway, I think we're back on track now. Yeah, I don't it know why. It's really difficult. Yeah. It's a really long way. Well, the, the thing is, the navigating was spot on. I'm just telling you it's the right way. Okay, let's find Brigham. Let's go. Okay, Katie. We may have gone the long way around there. Yeah, we really did. Yeah, but well done. We've made it to one of the most desolate places on earth. Woo! Yay! Brigham. Okay, Katie, that was a great <laughs> expedition and a, and, a, and a bit of fun, really. Um, but what was it all about? So over the last few weeks, we've been looking at Advent and we've been looking at some of the scriptures in Advent. And we can see how in the scriptures there are signposts and these signposts come as prophecies and promises and they all point to Jesus and they say who he is and why he came. So one of these scriptures in the Bible is Isaiah 12 verse 1 to 3 and here it is a signpost to Jesus and our salvation. So the verse says, at the time you will say, I praise you Lord. You are angry with me, but you are not angry with me now. You have comforted me. God is the one who saves me. I will trust him and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord gives me strength and makes me sing. He has saved me. You will receive your salvation with joy, as you would draw water from a well. Okay, so you know on that expedition, Bear Ovenhob, he missed two really obvious signs didn't he and you saw them katie but yeah. we didn't you know and as experts you know so often we can miss the obvious and so much of advent christmas the bible it's signposts to jesus but you know millions of people exclude jesus from his own birthday and you know that's always been the same even when jesus was born two thousand years ago he was excluded and he was born in a stable um, and you know, the whole message of Christmas, the whole message of the Bible and the scripture, the whole signposting is to really our means to salvation. Jesus left heaven to come to earth so that when we leave earth, we can go to heaven to be with him. But not only that, now, as that verse said, there's just an amazing joy and a peace to be have in, had in knowing Jesus. You know, the Jesus of the Bible, and the Jesus today that we know that you can know is totally fun. He's the most ridiculously free person. And you know, Jesus loved to party and he hung out with the non-religious. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's actually knowing that the savior of the world, that God, the God who was born in a stable, but died on a cross and is alive today who rose again, uh, 
can be our, our friend and we can get to know him. And Roger's going to say more about the signposts in the Bible that point to Jesus. Okay, well, have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Bye then. Thank you, Bear Avonhob, and thank you, Katie, for being his assistant. <laughs> we do so enjoy you, Bear Avonhob. <laughs> Please come back soon. Now it's time for two more carols. O Little Town of Bethlehem and Silent Night.
Coffee Theology Time. Zoe, who are you going to interview today? Hello and welcome to Coffee Theology. So this month we are looking at the heroes of the Christmas story. So big kids and little kids, this is for you. So this week we're looking at the wise men. And I'm here with my mum, Ali. <laughs> so who were the wise men? Well, they came from the east of where Jesus was born and they were magi, wise men who studied the stars. Now I have some here, some wise men. These ones have been eating a few too many mince pies. A little bit. They're a bit, a little bit chubby. <laughs> but we think, people say there were three, probably because there were three gifts that they brought. But we really don't know how many wise men there were. And they brought three gifts. They brought gold, which points to Jesus being a king. They brought frankincense, which points to him being God. And they brought myrrh, which points to him dying for us. Great. And so by our... Uh wise men, the wise men, heroes of the Christmas story? Well, they are heroes because they, the distance they travelled to find baby Jesus. Now here we've got a map and some people think that they travelled a thousand miles to find baby Jesus. Now, wow. um, now from the top of Scotland here to the bottom of England there is 874 miles by road. Now, so they would have travelled all that way, but they <laughs> didn't have the transport we have. Do you know how they did it? How did they do it? They travelled on a camel. <laughs> now, this one looks a bit sleepy, but if you'd trekked a thousand miles through the desert, I think you'd be a bit sleepy as well. So, I don't think I'd fancy it. No, wow, going a thousand miles on a camel. Poor camels. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so what can we learn from the wise men? Well, I think there's three things we can learn from them. First of all, the commitment that they they went so far to find the baby. Also, they really knew what they wanted. They really knew what they were going to do. So they said, in the Bible it says, they actually said, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? That They were really knew what they were searching for. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So there was the commitment. They knew what they were looking for. And also the wonder, the wonder of the story. This story really makes me wonder. Why did they set off in the first place from so far away? And, and what did they think when they got to Herod's palace and there wasn't a king there? What did they think then? Mm. But also the thing that most makes me wonder is... How did they follow a star? Wow. How do you possibly follow a star? Very true. That's a good question. <laughs> it is. So there's lots of things to wonder about this story. Like the whole Christmas story makes you wonder, and which is amazing. Brilliant. Wow. We can wander away. Right, show us your jumper. My Christmas jumper. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Mum. You're very welcome. And um, so if you have any questions about today's conversation or anything else to do with the Christian faith or the Christmas story, um, feel free to email us at pastoral at kingcc.org. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Ali. That was excellent. Thank you for teaching us that. Now you're going to see something which I personally have never seen before. You may have seen it, but I had never seen this before. You're going to see Roger doing a craft activity with felt tip pens, pencils, crayons, pair of scissors and some cards. So young ones and grown ups, if you want to do a craft activity, go and find some card, find some felt tip pens or some crayons or some pencils. And a pair of scissors, don't forget to ask a grown-up first if, um, to use the scissors. And follow Roger doing this craft activity. Hi, great being together again on this last Sunday before Christmas. But not too late to make some last-minute Christmas decorations. So, children, this is really for you, but you might need help of some grown-ups as well, particularly as uh, we're going to be using some scissors. Okay, so make sure you've got some grown-ups around who can help you, help you with the cutting out bits.
Okay, so I've got a felt tip here, and um, uh, but you don't need to use that. You can use a, a pencil, and I'm going to write out a letter, and I'm going to write it nice and big, and kind of in like blocky type writing. In other words, what I mean is got well, it's like that. Okay, it's like that, and that's the letter J. Okay, I'm going to do another letter O, a little bit in the middle, and I haven't left much space on my bit of paper for the last letter, but I'm going to squeeze it in and I'm sure you'll do a much better job than me. But do you want to guess what the letter is? It's the letter, yeah, I think you got it, Y. And of course that spells joy. And we're going to cut those out. So you cut the letter out, and as you do so, let's just think about joy. It's such a small word, isn't it? And yet, it's one of those small words with big meanings. It's packed full of, of good meanings. It's packed full of enjoyment and, and pleasure and, and good things. I mean, who, who, who doesn't like joy? Well, I guess they're Scrooge. And of course the Grinch. But apart from that, I think most people love joy. It, it just speaks of everything good, really. And it's a good thing. So here we are. I'm just going on the J, going around the corner here, around the bend. Oh, up. tricky, tricky, tricky. Remember, make sure you get adult help if your scissors are sharp. And ta-da! Letter J. So, if you do that to all the letters, and what you can do, if you've done it on white card, like I've done it, you could just write in um, things that bring you joy. It might be a, a favourite, it might be your pet, it may be uh, your friends, friends and friends names, it might be your favourite sports team, it may be just something you like doing. It might be all sorts of like a certain type of food. Anyway, you can write, fill up what gives you joy. Or what you could do is you could colour the letters in. You can use good old felt tips. Okay, just colour in bright letters and joyful, joyful colours. Or you could get some Christmas wrapping paper. Again, you know, ask a grown-up. And you could stick Christmas paper over the letter and just make it very Christmassy. Or even, if you've got some glitter, it's a Christmas moment. Okay, Christmas isn't complete without glitter. So once you cut all those out, and I've done some earlier, then what you can do is begin to link them or thread some string maybe. I've got some festive string here. I'm gonna try and hold this out the right way. I think that's right, okay? You can, you can put, can't say the word, festive thread. <laughs> and you've got like a, a little paper chain. Uh, you could do more joys and have a whole string of joys. You could maybe hang them up somewhere. Or what I've done here, this is a bit kind of smart, okay? I've, um, I've stuck the J-O-Y onto just some red ribbon. You see that? And again, you can cut, most of it boring, it's just white. You can colour it in. And yes, yeah, so you can just hang that somewhere. Or what you can do is just cut out the letter and you can thread it. Now, Cheryl suggested I use some really um, kind of trendy, um, natural looking jute like that, which makes it very kind of trendy and kind of, yeah, cool, okay? Or you might want to go the curly ribbon route, okay? But you can thread it through and then you, you can do each letter separately and you hang them on the Christmas tree. You've got three new ornaments. And anyway, I think you're all gonna get much better ideas than I've got around the letter joy. I think uh, you need to be grateful I didn't suggest the word frankincense because I think that would be a little bit harder. But let's make joy decorations. Let's make joy the real centre of, of our Christmas celebrations. So, I think that's me done. Um, I'm going to leave you with a photograph to look at 
because I need to move rooms now uh, for the next part of my talk. Okay? See you soon. Don't go away. You may wonder why show a photo of a signpost in Brigham. What's that going to do with uh, joy? What's it going to do with what I've got to say next? Well, during these Sundays, we've been looking at uh, Advent, really, the, the scriptures that pointed towards the first coming of Jesus. Actually, Advent is not only about the first coming of Jesus, but also about his return, the second coming as well. But we've been particularly focusing uh, on, on the first coming of Jesus. And they remind us of who he is and why he came and how we can prepare our hearts and, and how we receive him as the one who has come. And so in one sense, these scriptures, these prophecies, these promises, they're like signposts to the coming of Jesus. And really what I want us to do, uh, just for a short while now, is again go back to the book of Isaiah. We've, we've been there already this month. And, and just look at some of these signposts that pointed forward to, to this Jesus, this, this new time when he would come. But also we're going to look at one that points us beyond that. But first of all, let's start with Isaiah chapter 12. And the first few verses, it says this, that in that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord, although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. This is a song. And, and it points to the day, actually, when salvation would happen. Beautiful phrase there of, of, of drawing water from the wells of salvation with joy. But actually, if you look closely to the song, you'll find there's some very similar words to the song that was sang after the Israelites came through the Red Sea, that great song of deliverance. Uh, and you find actually the same words echoed. And that was celebrating a great deliverance. It was celebrating um, the freedom of, from being enslaved. It, 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 it celebrated a great future. It celebrated God our Saviour. And this song leans into that, it borrows phrases from that, but it points forward to another day. This day of salvation. When we draw from the wells of salvation. It was that day that uh, a, a lady in Samaria who really had had such a broken life, you know, she'd been uh, born it, just by virtue of birth into difficult circumstances and or, or, or kind of difficult surroundings. She experienced broken relationships. She kind of life was tough for her, and it was her that she was at a, it, as she went to a well in Samaria. It was there that she met Jesus, and Jesus spoke to her. Not only about having a drink from this physical well, but he spoke about another source of water that would that actually well up from within her, a spring of eternal life. She was meeting this Jesus who had now come, that Isaiah 12 was pointing towards that, yeah, with joy, you would draw waters from the wells of salvation. And this dear lady whose life was so messed up, she drank from that well. In fact, she was so overjoyed, she went and told everyone about it. Jesus has come that we might access his salvation and that is the source of true joy. And Jesus, this is that woman who was so used to 
things just going going bad on her. He said, no, this will, this world will, will spring up. It will be everlasting. Isn't it wonderful? As we know Jesus, we know his salvation and it will never run dry. And then a bit later uh, in Isaiah, we can read this in Isaiah 61, a very famous uh, section of scriptures where we read about the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And it goes on to say this with all the wonderful things that this one would do, that he would bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. Breathtaking, isn't it? If that first signpost in Isaiah 12 was all about exodus and salvation, this signpost, which points forward again, is all about the day of Jubilee and freedom. And Jubilee was this remarkable kind of thing God built into his economy that in that year of Jubilee, all debts would be forgiven. They would be wiped clean. What a breathtaking, amazing, wonderful year to wake up to. Everything's gone. It's free. We're free. Genuinely free. Imagine that if our nation's debts, which kind of mount all the time, all the time, all the time. Suddenly we woke up, 2021, they're gone. Imagine that on a personal level. With this, Isaiah 61 it is all about one who would usher in, who would bring a jubilee, not just of physical debts or, or financial debts, but actually of the stuff that we, that so, again, it so breaks people's lives. It set the oppressed free. It will heal the brokenhearted. And as we know, as we go through the pages of the Bible, we get to the beginning of Luke, and it's these very scriptures that Jesus announces his coming in terms of ministry. And he's saying, today, this is fulfilled. The time of Jubilee is here. So this signpost points us again to the arrival and the ministry of Jesus. And he came to set us free. It's a time of good news for the poor. It's a time of the oil of joy instead of mourning. And that really is what the birth of Jesus is all about. It's that dawning of true freedom. And as we read through this, through the Gospels, and we read the different Times when Jesus, he healed the sick, he set free the oppressed, he, he, he restored people's lives, he mended what was broken. What we find is basically a trail of joy. The one anointed with joy above his companions just leaves this trail of joy as this jubilee freedom liberates people's lives. Our deepest hurts can be changed, can be transformed for joy. This really is good news of great joy. So we get this signpost for salvation, and it's with joy we, we, we drink of that salvation. We get this signpost which is all about freedom, and we find that part of that freedom is an exchange for all of our hurt and our mourning, that we can know his joy. But then finally, in the middle of Isaiah, to jump in between the two scriptures, in Isaiah 35, we get another signpost, and it's this one that points us beyond that first coming of Jesus. That coming of Jesus to Bethlehem that we're celebrating this time of year. But there's going to be another coming where it won't be to one specific place, it will be to the whole world the second coming, he will return, the king will return. And we read this in Isaiah 35, and I'm just going to pick up three verses through the chapter. It says this, that the desert 
and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. There'll be an explosion of joy. Then the lame will leap like deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Wow, what images. And then that chapter ends up and the redeemed will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. This points us to an amazing time that's yet to happen, that Jesus will come again and that's part of Advent. We celebrate his first coming, but we look forward to his second coming. We live in a very tired and, and weary and, and creaking world. But let's know this, that today we can draw water from the worlds of salvation with joy. Today, we, we can know his freedom. We can know Jubilee in our hearts. And that's the message we've got to share with, with others. Jesus meets us in our brokenness. He meets us in our blindness. He meets us in us being uh, enslaved. Jesus sets us free. But let's also know there's an even greater joy beyond those things. That actually, there will be a day when, when heaven and earth, it will be, you know, it will be rolled up as a garment. And there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And everlasting joy will be on our heads. It's a remarkable, remarkable promise of the new creation. Joy will flood the earth. Wonderful promise, wonderful future, wonderful hope. Now let's finish with the, the words that the angels spoke to the shepherds in the fields that night, that first Christmas. They said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Let's celebrate this great joy bringer, this great joy giver, this great herald of, of, of good news that we have in Jesus. Let's worship him this Christmas. Let's be grateful to him. But also let's grow in everything and that he's called us to know. Let's drink deep from the wells. Let's celebrate this freedom. But let's look forward as well to that day, that day when all things will be made new. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we just want to thank you for the gospel that is truly good news. And in these times, Lord, where we've gone through a whole year now of, of, of difficult news, of hard news, of challenging news, of news that we've wondered, will it ever get better? Lord, we want to thank you that your good news never changes. Lord, that in the midst of all things, in the midst of, of brokenness and struggle and pain, Lord Jesus, you come to bring salvation. You come to bring freedom. Thank you that these are the sources of true, lasting joy. And we say, Lord, would you come and fill our hearts, fill our lives again with this true joy that is from you to us and then can flow through us to others. Lord, please do that, we ask. Lord, just crown our celebrations with your joy, we ask. And as we ask this now, we lift our heads and we look forward to that day when you will come again, that everything, everything will be renewed. Lord, we thank you for such a hope. 
We worship you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for that activity and thank you for that great message. Uh, it's something that um, I'd like to uh, listen to, rewind and listen to, to again. Before we finish, we've got a carol, one of our favourite carols, maybe one of your favourite carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, Alex, for um, singing that with us. That, that, that was great. Well, before we go, just uh, one or two little notices, just so you are brought up to date. Um, on Christmas Eve, that's on Thursday, uh, Christmas Eve morning at about 11 o'clock, if you go to our YouTube page, you'll be able to tune in to Roger By's Christmas Pastoral encouragement and that'll be opened up at about 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Next Sunday the 27th there won't be a meeting uh, either on YouTube or on Zoom. There won't be a meeting at all. We're giving our our production teams the weekend off. Thank you. We are so appreciative to you guys how you've kept us in contact with each other. Thank you for doing that. So please enjoy the weekend off so we're not there won't be anything on Zoom or on YouTube. On Sunday the 3rd of January at 11 o'clock in the morning we'll be having our meeting but that'll be on Zoom only. That will not be on YouTube. So Sunday the 3rd 11 o'clock is Zoom only. And then the following Sunday, that's Sunday the 10th of January, we'll be back to Zoom and YouTube. So I hope that's all clear. If not, give the uh, right to us that the, the address comes up at the end and uh, we, we, we will um, remind you again. Paul will send out the links for the YouTube um, uh, for the 3rd of January, so there should be no problem there at all. So that just leads me to say, guys, have a great Christmas. 
and uh, be safe if you're traveling drive safely and uh, we'll see you all in the new year god bless Thank you.